As we stand here today, Syrians are having to work harder than ever just to survive. Humanitarian suffering as a result of protracted conflict has been exacerbated by food insecurity, the COVID-19 pandemic, a dire economic situation, a water crisis, and cholera. And now winter is here. As food insecurity reaches record heights, children in Syria are particularly at risk. Cases of severe acute malnutrition have doubled since last year. Parents are going without food as they try to keep the children from starving. This is what is at the forefront of our mind as co-pen holders when it comes to the Syrian humanitarian file, the needs of the Syrian people. For the past two years, Ireland and Norway have list, listened carefully to each and every of the month, at the monthly briefings in the council. For each of those briefings, we have heard that the humanitarian situation in Syria has continued to deteriorate. So before today's meet, meeting, which will be our last on the council, we want to be clear. All modalities of aid delivery are absolutely necessary to save lives across Syria. All channels should be made and kept open. Cross-border and cross-line access must continue, and we encourage continued early recovery efforts. Thank you, Mona. <clears throat> Thank you, Ambassador Yule. Uh, as Mona has said, over the last two years, we have also seen the Council come together to renew the UN's cross-border operation on two separate occasions. And we want to thank all Council members for their cooperation in securing that life-saving decision. It is an acknowledgement of the critical need for this operation. Cross-line deliveries, while very important, simply cannot compare to it in size and scope and scale. And that is why Ireland and Norway are working with all council members to secure a confirmation of the additional six months authorization foreseen in resolution 2642. An estimated 15.3 million people, 15.3 million people in the coming year in Syria will require humanitarian assistance. This is the highest number in need since the beginning of the conflict. We cannot allow ourselves to become numb to these staggering figures. Millions of vulnerable people including the elderly, women and children, need this council to act. We must continue to use all modalities to deliver the, ne the necessary aid, the aid that is so desperately needed. Ireland and Norway echo the Secretary General, who has said that the continuation of the cross-border mechanism by the Security Council is a moral and humanitarian imperative. This council has the ability to ensure the continuation of this mechanism, and it has a duty to do so. Thank you. Uh, what is your sense of the capture in the last few days of several ISIS militants in terms of the humanitarian situation in Syria? And on a totally different front, would you comment on President Zelensky coming to the United States? Thank you. Pamela Falk from CBS. <laughs> I'm giving Mona the easy question. <laughs> okay. yeah. Now, I mean, the, uh, also the... Uh, as we know, the political situation in, in, in Syria is uh, equally uh, difficult as the humanitarian, and of course it reinforces each other, which uh, leads to the, uh, the very, very severe both humanitarian and political crisis we, uh, we, we are faced with in, in Syria. In relation to President Zelensky, I think it's a measure of the support of the United States and the European Union and Norway and like-minded countries around the world in support of uh, the Ukrainian people. It's a welcome development. President Zelensky has been communicating to us directly into the Security Council, into the, uh, the European Council. So this is just, I suppose, an extended development in person, but it's very, very welcome and it's a measure of the support that we all share for the Ukrainian people. First, um, you're both leaving the council, so from us, thank you. You both countries have engaged with the press, unlike many other countries do. So thank you very much for two years. Of Charm will get you everywhere. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> okay. Then yeah. the, the, the question is, um, who is taking over 
from you, has it been decided who is taking over the humanitarian file? Because you both are leaving the Council in less than two weeks' time, and that resolution is coming up in three weeks' time. Yeah, our, our understanding is that those discussions around various responsibilities have still not been finalised, so I don't think it would be incumbent on us as outgoing members to comment on, on, on those discussions. Um, given this critical moment that there's no handover to another country at this important moment. All I can say is we're going to work right to the end of our term and we want to either, either complete that work on our term in terms of the technical confirmation or hand it over in good shape to the incoming uh, Security Council. So that's as far as I'm going to say. But we'll, we're going to keep on working. As we say, okay. we feel it is still a, a, a moral duty to make sure that this cross-border will stay open for another six months and we will work intensely until the 31st of December to make that happen. Absolutely. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Thank you. Thank you.